What's up bros? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to continue talking about noise. This is the third tutorial in our noise series. We did displacement one, displacement two, and now we're going to be talking about using the shader effector with noise. And we're going to be applying some of the things that we learned in displacement one and two. So if you haven't seen those, go ahead and go back and watch those. And um, we're going to kind of use some of the same techniques. I may do some of the same things from the previous tutorials and kind of blow through them pretty quick. So I want you to watch those first if you haven't already watched them. So um, we're, we are going to start uh, with a cloner, it just, which is super simple. It's, uh, we're going to use a, a cube in this example because if I use spheres, you won't be able to see rotation, although this would work with pretty much anything. I'm going to start with a cube that is 30 inches all around. And I'm going to go to MoGraph, create a cloner object, and put it in the cloner. Um, something that you're probably familiar with if you do a lot of MoGraph stuff. And I'm going to uh, change the mode to grid array. We're only going to have one uh, on Y. And I think we're going to start with like a 20 count in each direction. And we're just going to spread these out. until we have 20 by 20 grid of cubes. Make sure you turn on render instances because um, we're going to do a lot in the viewport and it's you know going to need uh, to be as smooth as possible so we can see what we're doing. So uh, if you were following in the previous tutorials, you had, uh, learned what we can do with noise and the displacer. We're going to use the same kind of technique and we're going to create um, just a new material and put a color in there and um, I'm actually going to do a layer and then we're going to add our, our different um, shaders in here. We're going to do uh, noise to begin with and um, I guess we'll go ahead and, and click on the cloner and go up to MoGraph and we're going to go to the effectors and add a shader. Now in the shader, now this is just for reference I'm going to put the material onto the shader. This is because we need to reference that tag and it needs somewhere to live. So under shader, I'm going to click and go to parameters. I'm going to turn off scale because we're not worried about that right now. Today we're really going to go into position Y. So let's bring up the Y. And uh, now we haven't applied anything to the shader yet. So let's go back and um, we want to use the noise in here to affect these cubes. So um, under, let's see where it is, it's in shading. We've got basically the same thing that you would find in the deformer, um, in the deformer, uh, not effector, deformer, um, I'm sorry, in the displacer deformer. Uh, you find the same thing that we use there, which is that you can select color and you can put a texture tag into there. So I'm going to drag this texture into here. And so you can see what it's done now. It's just applied that noise. And if I hit play and I go back to my noise, we can add a little movement, move it around, speed. You know, we can see that it's there, it's working, it's doing something. So Basically, everything applies that we did in displacement. So, you know, we can animate this noise like we did before. Um, we can, you know, change the direction it goes in, that, that there, the undulations are happening in. Uh, we can change strength. We can change uh, global scale. We can make it really small. We can make it really big. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave this at 100, and for now, I'm going to... Uh, just put the movement and speed back to zero so that we can take a good look at this. So this is working. So everything that we talked about as far as playing around with um, with seed, with types of noise, with your scale, with your clip, your high low clip, brightness and contrast, everything applies to this as well, which is really cool. Um, if we go back to the base texture, for example, and we go to this layering that we have and we add a gradient. You can see what happens. There's a linear gradient going on here. So you get that low high deal going on. Um, 
What we're going to use, though, is the circular uh, 2D gradient. And um, I've never tried this spherical. Hmm. Doesn't do what I thought it would. Okay, so we're going to use circular. The only thing about it is we need to set up this texture because right now it's set to UVW mapping. And if, if we're looking at, let me hit stop so you can see this. If we're looking at a gradient like this, that's really, it's not what we're looking for. Um, we want it to be all the way, it, we want it to be like a gradient all the way around on this object and it's not doing that obviously. So if you click on the tag and then you go over to the left side here and you turn on texture mode, you see we're in UVW mapping. We're actually going to change this to spatial. And now I'm sorry, not spatial. We're going to turn this to flat. Um, now, right now, the texture is facing the wrong way. So the gradient's facing the wrong way. So the first thing we have to do is rotate it by 90 degrees, but it's too small. We want that one gradient to cover just this area like this. And um, I can tell you right off the bat that it's going to be about a thousand by a thousand. That's how big this grid needs to be. And then I'm going to go to top view so I can actually align this and make it look right. And I'm just going to center it up. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. So that our texture is perfectly centered. We have a gradient on top and you can see what it does. That is the same gradient that we basically have inside of this texture. So this is what makes this cool because you have a lot of control over this. If you wanted to go to uh, change your gradient, make it a little brighter, almost clipping in the middle, you can see what happens to your cubes. And if I go the other direction, same thing. Pretty cool looking. Reminds me of graphing calculator or something like that. All right, so on the cube now, we're going to actually make this a little higher resolution if your viewport can handle it. If you don't have a good graphics card, then maybe you don't want to take this down. Um, but I'm going to go to 15 all the way around on the size of the cube. And um, then we're going to up the count by double to 40 in our cloner. So now we have something really cool looking here. So if we wanted to animate this, we could. If we wanted to like keyframe the gradient, um, I guess I'll show you, for example, um, if I set a point here and I go to the end, and I do something like this, Set another keyframe, you, know, you hit play, and it it's real nice. The noise controls the cloner objects, which is cool. But I'm going to undo. I'm going to delete those keyframes because we're not going to do that right now. Um, we have got that noise still sitting in there, and we can't see it. And that's because the gradient is set to normal. It's overriding everything. And if we change the... Um, the um, the uh, mode, I guess, to uh, multiply, you can see the, the, the noise comes out through what we're working on, which is really cool. And that gives you control. So you can add a little noise to something. Now we still don't have any movement. Um, if you were to animate the uh, just the noise, for example, uh, hit play and I'll turn on movement speed a little bit and then I'll kind of Tick it down. You can see it's animating just the noise without animating the gradient, which is cool. So we got a little bit of randomness going on here. And um, I'm going to turn that off though, because we're going to do what we did in the um, displacement tutorial part two, which is we're going to add sound. So I'm going to go up to MoGraph Effectors and do sound. We're going to load up any audio file, in my case, that same awful audio file as last time, and uh, turn off all frames, and up my project time to 300, and I'm going to hit play. And there's the awful sound. Awful, awful stock music. So now I have that, and I need to get that into here somehow. So what are we controlling in here? Um, in this case, we're actually going to control a couple things. We're going to control strength of the shader effector. And I think maybe we'll, um, we'll control the Y 
um, the inches and in Y of transform as well at the same time. So I'm going to add a Cinema 4D tag, Expresso, bring the sound in, and just like in the last one, I'm going to load up the uh, sample node, and we're going to go object, like before, into the effector, and then we're going to uh, have our strength output on our samples. So that's just like in the last tutorial, and then I'm going to bring in the shader, so we can control the shader. And what are we going to control? The strength, we're going to translate that to um, the strength. And we're also going to have it control the, what would it be? Not this position. It would be parameter transform PY, because it's the Y going up and down. There we go. So should be seeing something I'm not turn off Y for a second so why am I not seeing anything so let's not have it control Y for now let's just put our Y back up may have to use a range mapper for that if we want to do that. So I'll leave that off for now. If you want to put a range mapper in there and get the parameters right, you can. Okay, so we've got that going, which is nice. We're going to do the same thing as before, too. I'm going to turn off this horrible music so we can just see what it's doing and not have to hear it. Um, in sound, um, under fall off under effector fall off we're going to uh, take this up quite a bit like we did before so it's not falling down as much got it kind of a slower fall and what's cool about this now is you can do all the things that you did in the last tutorial um, and what I like to do with something like this as well is I like to go in and start adding other effectors and then have the um, have the sound effector control those parameters as well. For instance, if you wanted to do a MoGraph effector of random, that's a good one to put in there. And I'll go into random. Um, let's say we want to have it control uh, position and rotation. Let's do it this way. We'll have it control random position and random rotation. So I'm going to bring in random here. And down under parameter, I'm going to bring in uh, P. So I'm going to have a control X, Y, and Z of, of uh, position all at the same time. That's why I'm using P. I'm going to do the same thing with rotation. I'm going to control all the parameters of rotation at the same time in this case. Uh, you could break it down if you wanted to, but I'll just do it this way. And I'm going to plug in the strength and the rotation there. Now, what should be happening... Uh, which I think I know why it's not. The the random effector is not attached to this cloner. See, it's not in this effector list, so I have to drag it in here. There we go. So now we got some cool rotation going. And I'm actually going to change the fall off on sound effector. I, w I want it to go back and forth more and, and kind of maybe go back to its home a little bit. Um, I'm going to change my cutoff and compression a little bit. There we go. So I'm looking for more of that. Let me find a good spot here in that fall off. Then I'll turn the horrible music back on. You can see what's going on here. Oh man, that's bad. All right, so uh, that's about it. We use the same techniques as before, and we just put it in the shader effector. So you can imagine what the possibilities would be if you're working on a project and you really want things to respond to sound. Possibilities are pretty much endless, especially if you want to do something kind of artsy looking. Um, so um, that's it. I would love to see if, if other people are doing stuff with this or if you've taken this to the next level and really uh, dug into it in depth. I'd love to see what your results are. Um, 
If you uh, like what you see here and you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to us on YouTube. You can just click the button and subscribe and you'll get everything as soon as it's released. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all the other social media platforms as well as brograph.com. Uh, we also have the podcast, so uh, if you like this kind of thing and you want to hear us talk about it more in depth, maybe when you're driving to work or something like that, um, we are online at uh, brograph.com. You can get all the details. We're on iTunes, of course. Um, and we sell t-shirts now. No brograph, no mograph. Check them out. It helps support us. And I think that covers just about everything. Until next time, I'm Dave Koss. Have a good one. Later, bros. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional, time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new Brograph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks, Asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with BroGraph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. Brograph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to Brograph Tutorials. It's pretty good, I guess.